because it sounded like I was in love with Jesus and because I was in love with Jesus, he loved me, but then they cleaned it up. Ah, yeah. Because he first, first loved me. me. I mean, he taught me what love was about because he gave his life uh, for me. Yes, and if anybody in here is in love with Jesus, why don't you just make a joyful Praise the Lord. Come on, let's have the word. Pray. 
a wise and most gracious God, our Father, hear your children are gathered to nourish upon your word, to feed upon the bread of life. So God, we pray now that you open up all our ears, our hearts, our minds, our very beings, God, to receive what thus saith the Lord. And God, I pray now that you would move all vestiges of Roxanne out of the way and send the true preacher, Jesus, who is the Christ. And God, when it's all said and done, let us be different. Let us be energized. Let us be soldiers on the battlefield for the Lord. We do lift this prayer in Jesus' name. Our hearts and souls say amen. Amen, amen. 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 And just so that we can have a point of focus, the title of this message is simply All In. All In. The theme for this Women's Day season, Women Pressing the Higher Call, reminded me of a book by Mark Batterson, who is the pastor of the National Community Church in Washington, D.C. In his book, All In, he states that the gospel costs nothing. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It can only be received as a free compliment of God's grace. It doesn't cost anything, but it demands everything. It demands that we go all in, which is a term that simply means placing all that you have into God's hands. Pushing it all in. And truthfully, that's where we get stuck. We get stuck in spiritual no man's land. No woman's land. We get afraid that if we go all in, we might miss out on something in life. And something that life may have to offer. We're afraid that if we go all in, that we might miss out on a blessing that God had for us. But the truth of the matter is... If we don't hold out on God, he won't hold out on us. So as the hymn writer says, if you don't give up on God, he won't give up on you. If you indeed are women pressing for the higher call, that means that you've got to understand that you must be all in. You must understand that the blessings from God cannot be purchased. Well. Now I gotta tell you something, you can't be all in if you act like a Christian on Sunday and raise hell on Monday and Saturday. You cannot be all in if you come to church services on special days but don't attend Bible study or church school. And if you're really pressing to the higher call you must be willing to place your all, your everything in the hands of God. Yes. Come on now. See, we, we want the blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't want the burdens that may come with the blessings. Some of us say we want to hit the lottery. But we don't want the burden of having to pay those extra taxes. Or the burden of meeting the unknown friends and family that come out of the woodwork because they Wow. Yeah, but continue 
when our sinful behavior. <laughs> we want his peace, Woo! his love, yeah. his joy, ah. but we want him on our terms and in our own determined time. Yeah. The truth is, we're just not all in. Come on. Right. I know you're right. That's all right. Well, well, well. We're impressing well. for the higher call. Pressing toward the goal. Well, I just stopped by to share this morning that if you truly are following your theme, that you got to be all in. And if you're all in, that means you got to live a disciplined life. Discipline. A disciplined life is one that's focused. It's focused on the prize. And first, to qualify for the prize, or even to be in the game, in our game, you got to qualify by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died for your shoes. And then if you want to participate in the life of the one who's all in, you got to be busy. And I don't mean B-U-S-Y because that means being under Satan's yoke. Wow. But that means you got to be focused on the work yeah. of kingdom building. That's right. That's right. And then it occurred to me if we are those women who are pressing for that higher call, who are professing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we are placing ourselves in positions to be stretched to move to higher ground. And in order to be stretched, to be extended, to serve beyond what you think you're able to serve, you've got to go back to that discipline life. Well, discipline. You have to understand that in the word discipline is disciple. Yes. And disciples are followers. So the first question becomes, who are you following? Yeah. Ah, since we're in the church, we can assume that we are all followers of Jesus Christ. Not followers of the musicians, not followers of the steward board, not followers of the trustees, If you look at the disciples, Jesus, they followed him many places. In Matthew 5 and 1, it says, And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up into a mountain, and when he was set, the disciples came unto him. The disciples had to be all in because they followed Jesus up mountain. Mm. Yeah. That's right. What does this life of discipline qualify you for? How does it qualify you to be a disciple of Jesus? Well, the truth of the matter is all of us have goals. Yeah. All of us have something that we're looking toward. Whether you mentally note your goals or you write them down somewhere, there are some things, some purposes, some ambitions, some aspirations that we want to accomplish in this life. But Paul at the beginning of this letter writes, he says that the first thing that should be at the top of your list is to know Christ. He writes, I want to know Christ. More than that, Paul says he wants to know him in the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings. When you really want to know you know that you're going to experience power of Christ's resurrection in your life. And knowing Christ in the power of resurrection is to discover that suffering is a privilege and not a penalty. Paul says, no Christ ought to be at the top of our list. If we desire to know Christ and we understand that we will experience the power of his resurrection, that means the power to get up from the dead places in our lives. That means we got to have power over our anger, over our jealousies, over our depression. 
direction. Power over the things in life that will stop us from being all in. The power that will provide us a way to live through our suffering. Our number one goal ought to be to know Christ. Anybody all in? All in. <laughs> But you know, Paul, he was a real person. He understands how easily we are distracted from that goal. In fact, he writes in his letter the things that distract us from knowing Christ are things of the flesh in which we are tempted to put our confidence. Those things of the flesh might be our abilities, it might be our stature in life. It might be the things in our lives that become the objects of our goal. Ah, maybe your goal is to earn more life money <laughs> so that you can pay off your bills. <laughs> Young people, you may just want to earn more money because you want to spend it any way you want to spend it. <laughs> the goal may be to hold on to a position in church <laughs> even though you don't know what, anything about that position. <laughs> the goal knowing full well that that won't be a guarantee in anything. The goal may be to get married. And then when you get married, you're going to wish you had done something else. But all those things are things of the flesh. And then you got people who believe that they have earned a certain status in their life. They think they've earned the status because of their degrees or because of the amount of money. They think that they're really all in. <laughs> in other words, they think that they have arrived at the destination that has been set aside to them. But then on the other hand, there are many people who believe that because of the things that have happened to them in life, or the things that have been done to them in life, that they will never achieve any modicum of success. So their goal is to make it yet one more day. But my brothers and sisters, anything that displaces Christ as a priority in your life becomes a barrier to knowing him in full. Right. Oh, Paul uses some rather strong language. He calls them both dogs. He calls them mutilators of the flesh. In other words, he's talking about people who are so caught up in the things of the flesh that they lose sight of the things of the spirit. Amen. They lose sight of the things in the spirit. Uh, I told you I'm going to have technology issues up here. Amen. Y'all bear with me. Feed on that for a minute. It's all right. It's all right. That's why I know. My back up. I, I, know, that. <laughs> I know that's right. Ooh. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Nothing like a heart attack. And Paul's talking about himself. He's no Johnny come late. See, he was the Hebrew of Hebrews. Yeah. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. Uh -huh. He was the person who really was a zealous Pharisee. He was the persecutor of the Christians. He was fanatical about people following the law. He was a fanatical about people following the discipline. He was a fanatical about people who had those credentials. But the truth of the matter is your credentials don't impress people very much. In fact, Paul actually was rebuking those who said that he lacked credentials. He said, if I gave up all the inferior stuff so I could know Christ personally, experience his resurrection power, be a partner in his suffering, go all the way with him to death itself. If there's any way to get on that resurrection for a day, come to death, I wanted to do it. Yeah. 
Now, I have to update Paul's credentials in modern language. <laughs> he says, you know, I, I'm American, I speak English. <laughs> or we might even cite being in the church. <laughs> I was born AME, bred AME, and I'll be AME dead. <laughs> Others may say, I was raised in a Christian home. <laughs> my grandfather and my father were ministers. I got enough credentials because in church. I come to church every Sunday. I'm involved in all the ministries. We might even cite our stature in the community. Well, I serve on this board. I am the treasurer and the president of this association. Ah, but all those are good and noble things. And they're goals that you may want to achieve. But in comparison to knowing Christ, Paul calls all of that garbage. Nothing. Yeah, that's right. Ah, they're trash in comparison to the Holy Cross. Anybody got some trash that needs to take out to the Lord? I think there's a trash can up here somewhere. You put that stuff in there. You know, we get stuck in some of our garbage. <laughs> Ah. So my brothers and sisters, how then are we to live? How do we get all in? And we do need to take out the trash. In other words, we've got to remove those barriers that get in our way. We need to make our primary purpose in life to know Christ better and to make him better known. Ah, that is the goal before us is to win the prize of God has called us heavenward to Christ Jesus. So how are you doing with winning the prize? Let me suggest a couple of characteristics about this pursuit of knowing Christ and reaching the prize that God has called you to. First of all, what matters is right now. What matters right now. To the future is our inspiration and our motivation. Straining toward what is ahead, but the past is forgotten. So we got to take off the trash. We got to get free from the things and the bad that was done to us. Remembering is a biblical word. Forgetting is not. When Paul speaks of forgetting what is behind, he does not mean that you should forget everything in the past. But what is it that you should forget and why? We must forget those painful things of our past. We must forget the wrong that others have done to us. We must forget the negative feelings of those wrongs that we were left with. We must forget we got to forget the past. I once heard the story about men in the old part of the world who used to test the strength of their horses by making them drag heavy carts while the wheels were locked. And my brothers and sisters, too many of us are harnessed with our paths, struggling to move forward with locked wheels. <laughs> we got to get away from having those wheels locked <laughs> and push <laughs> in spite of those painful things <laughs> and push. <laughs> we got to push <laughs> by loving our enemies. <laughs> we got to push <laughs> by reaching out to God our Father. <laughs> we got to push past. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Got the memory right. of the things that were done to us. Yeah. And then you must get free from the bad you done. Yeah. Oh. Some of us are saying, it isn't what others have done to me that bothers me. The things I want to forget is in respect to what I've done. Oh, uh, we need to get free from the memory of the bad that we've done. We got an enemy already, the devil, who wants to constantly accuse us of these things. But the word tells me if I have confessed my sins, why am I still hanging on to it? Why if Jesus died on that cross for my sins? Do I get myself locked down by holding on to that mess? Forgetting those things. 
I have the real problem behind hanging on to all that guilt is that you're saying to yourself, I don't believe my heart is as rotten as the Bible says. <laughs> Mm. Clinging to the guilt of the past is like saying, I'm too good for all the promises that God has in store for me. And if that's the case, you got too much of an opinion of yourself. You will free yourself by acknowledging what God's word says. And he says that when we are in Christ, we are a new creation. The old all things have become new. Y'all in? <laughs> then, you got to remember your training and your faith. The practices that you have engaged in the past has helped to shape the kind of disciple you are today. The failures and the successes of your past can weigh you down. But I say forget them. Because the word says we are surrounded by a great cloud of witness. So we can lay aside every weight. The sin which so easily ensnares us. And run with the endurance of this race that's set before us. What matters is right now. What matters to God is where right now. What will you do with your right now? Forgetting what lies behind means that you don't rest your success or be weighed down by your failures. Straining towards what is ahead is looking towards the future that is glorious with God. I press right In an effort to win the prize, to fulfill our call from God in Christ Jesus, we got to understand that we are never done. Paul wasn't done. He said, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. If Paul wasn't done, what makes you think that you are done? We are never finished. There is a purpose to God's call on our lives. When we are women, when we are men, pressing, you got to understand that you are never done. You're never finished in this life. There's always more to consider, more to learn about in your faith walk. There's always with the Jesus that you say you love. And I don't understand. How is it that people say they're in love with Jesus and don't spend any time with him? How can you say you're in love with somebody and you don't spend time with them? If you are in love with Jesus, you ought to be spending time with him. Just like you spend time with your special lover, you ought to be intimate with Jesus. Oh. 
Yeah. And I can spend all day long listing your trash. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't take out your trash, you're going to be the one who smells it when it gets stinky. And as long as that trash is around, you're going to be getting, you're going to get lost by the distractions of it. And don't get lost in all the bad things that were done to you. Don't get lost in all the good things that you think that you have been doing. But keep your focus on Jesus. Finding Christ everywhere and in everything in your lives. If you're really all in, that means you're going to roll up your sleeve and get busy doing the work that Christ has called you to do. In other words, if you are called to sing on the choir, you will be in that choir rehearsal every time you're supposed to be. If you're called to preach God's word, you're going to study to show yourself approved. If you're called to pray, you're going to pray before you get up here and pray. Because God wants you to be the one who opens up the door to heaven that the blessings from others may fall down. You're all in. Oh, you're all in. You gotta live in the present and live right now. Right. You can't get stuck in the woods. Yeah. The shoulds. Uh -huh. Or the coulds. Uh -huh. When you're pressing, well. and you're pressing with it, when you're all in, you got to be the image of Jesus. <laughs> when you're all in, you got to be the image of Christ. <laughs> and if you don't know what that image is, think about him going to Calvary, going there to die for a sinner like me. Think about Jesus going to that cross where he burned, where bearing all our burdens. When you're all in and you're connecting to Christ. God's hand will light. 
the creases that you see. And that means if I'm all in God's hand and I like these creases, nobody can shift me out of it. They can't rub me out of it. They can't wash me out of God's hand. I gotta be all in. Because when I'm all in, that means that everything that I am, I do owe it all to God. And then the songwriter put it this way. It says, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I won't ever love and trust him in his presence. That the verse of the Bible it says verse 4 all to Jesus I surrender Lord I give myself to thee fill me with thy love and power thy blessings fall on me if you're all in you gotta surrender you gotta surrender your own and give it all to Jesus. During the season, when your women press toward the higher call, you have to be all in. This is no joke. This is the real business of kingdom building. There are folks out there who are hurting. There are folks out there who need to hear your witness to hear your story about how you got over and how you overcame. But you gotta be all in. All in. Amen.